Hi everybody, my name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out here. I can't get my act together, it seems. It has been a very interesting day. Um, for me, I will tell you, I woke up around 3 or 4 this morning. I looked in my room and it was spinning around. And I only can give you an experience of possibly back in the days when I drank too much and I had a hangover and I was really super sick. And you, I, if you've ever been in that state, you are spinning and you are very sick. And um, I literally could not get out of bed. And we are always up at 5.50 in the morning, the entire house and the pack. And it's just our routine. And I was unable to get up. And that is the first time I think that has ever happened in this house. And um, then some point I'm sitting there in a really, I'm like shaking and um, just spinning. And I, I needed a uh, puke bowl. I told Nicole I'm going to chuck. And I, I started throwing up. And I laid back down, and I'm still spinning. And during that time, um, the dogs were doing their things and howling. It was just a very euphoric, odd time. And um, I'm giving this to you as it is a... Um, as this was happening, the boys somehow... How did this go down? What did we? How do we even know the cows were gone? So one of the workers that work around here that is in the area apparently saw our cows miles down the road. It's a long ways down there, like half an hour just to get down there one way and the next way back and then he goes down to our neighbor that's way down the road instead of coming around to us i guess and then he goes to him and says hey your neighbor's cows are out so our neighbor walks all the way up our road all the way comes and finds us and says hey your cows are down the road the guy saw the cows way down there so we ended up walking all the way down there and there they were way down the road into like a whole almost like a whole other subdivision area of places and this is through the jungle it's just not like a it's just like this is a hard path this is strange stuff that happened so it's like uh today is a sukkot and i did not get my calendar up i did not get that going so you guys went and you guys found the cows what exactly happened eli got stung by a caterpillar along the way um we found them they snapped the wires they had kicked one of the gates in like all like the gate was all snapped up the sticks on it were and then they snapped another barbed wire fence on the way up yeah. I guess they wanted out. Yeah, I guess they wanted out. So very strange, very strange timing. We always attribute a lot of this to Hasatan. Um, there is a ton of food around here. The cows are, are paraded around every single day to a place where there's lots of food. And for whatever reason, I guess last night they decided they were going to make a, an escape. And so they blew through two sets of fences to get out, which is really crazy. Um, and it, there's a long distance between both sets of fences. So it's very strange, the things that happen here. Um, so that is that. Um, I don't have my calendar ready. Let me pause real quick and get this right. One sec. All right, so here we go. Um, while we pause there, Nicole told me it is a Sukkot, not or no. Shemiatzeret, not Sukkot. So today is you got to you got to um, excuse me because uh, I am still shaking. I still th see things spinning. I still have my puke bowl to the side, so I am doing the very best that I could possibly do here. Nicole shakes her head at me. You shouldn't tell people this, but I am in TMI. a very... TMI, too much information. But I am in a very dilapidated state. My hands are literally shaking trying to get this open here. So this is today. We are in the month seven. It is the 22nd day of the month. It is, uh, I guess, on the Gregorian calendar, what is it, 18th? 18th. 18th, and it is our third day of the week, and it is a high Shabbat. What does that mean, gentlemen? That means it is the end of the fall era of the feasts. That means this today is the last day of the special days Yahuwah has set apart. And we're basically waiting until Passover. So this is the last day. You should be celebrating it. You should be doing what it says. There should be no work. It is a feast. So that means there is lots of cooking. You can do all the cooking you want. And that means you're allowed to kindle fire. But you should not do your normal day work. You should not go Survivor. to work and go get paid. You should not probably not cut your yard, cut your grass. Probably just... Keep treat as a Shabbat, but with cooking. Yep. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, how are you guys doing? Good. You guys tired? It's way later than we normally do. We normally have these blasted off hours earlier. Maybe and by 7, 8-ish. Yeah, and it's just uh, I'm only doing this because we have a note. Eli and I had an oath to y'all that we'd do it before noon. And uh, if not, I probably wouldn't be sitting here shaking it up trying to make this happen with y'all. So here we go. Um, I want to take us over to uh, a comment here um, by Brother Lester. Brother Lester is a very good friend of ours um we met him here on youtube and we've we've talked to him a lot i've talked to him in email and, and lester is just a really good guy and um he's he's i just really like him a lot and i appreciate lester 
And brother, uh, like always, I want you to hold on there. And we're, we're all going to go through afflictions. And not, not just for Lester, but for everybody out there. We're going to go through afflictions. We're going to go through trials. We're going to go through people in our lives that are trying to hurt us and destroy us. And it's going to be the work of Hasatan. And we always must remember to love our neighbors as ourselves. And our Creator doesn't want us to even go to Him until we've forgiven our brother. And so we have to, we don't want to hold these grudges. And so for if people are, are crushing us, we have to learn to forgive. We have to make this happen. So he had this really good article here, um, and this is what he said. Dear Brother Jason, regarding pork eating, today I read a diet article written by an Indian specialist. He had mentioned very clearly bacon and sausage, what kind of damage they do to the body and to the extent of cancer, and also not good for people who have diabetes. Then what else? Anyone who would like to enjoy this kind of food will be sick more faster. As I mentioned earlier, Old and New Covenant is the only manual for our life cruising, low altitudes or high altitudes. Love always, Lester. And yes, much love to you, brother. We do appreciate you a ton. And thank you very, very much for writing this in. Guys, what do you, th what do you think of this? We, we know of this because, um, first of all, when you actually fry a bacon, there is a carcinogenic, the, the little black stuff that is in it. Not only is that smell that smells really good, that everyone's like, oh, that's really, that smells really super good. That's carcinogenic. It's carcinogenic. Is that how it says? It's cancer causing. That's the stuff you would not want to sit there and inhale a lot. So if you're sitting there cooking that up, you're going to get sick. And also if you're eating that and you, everybody should understand that this isn't about, oh, we want to take away the candy, the sweet tasting, good stuff of, of everything. This is about keeping you healthy. Our creator does not want us to eat things that are disease ridden. There are worms and parasites and kinds of germs and things inside of pigs that they are okay with. They can eat dead. They can eat um, corpses. They can eat manure. They can eat everything. And if they live. They, they, they wallow in it. That is what their life is. And then you go and you eat that and they, they do not sweat the same way that we sweat. They do not have the same kind of anything that they do. So they can live with these nasty ringworms and parasites and you can cook them. But if you do not kill these worms that are in the bacon, you're going to end up with them and you will end up dying. And so this is why our creator has said, let us not eat unclean food. And so thank you very much, Lester. I really appreciate that. And we are heading into um, where we do a drum roll, gentlemen. And we're there. Okay, Matthew 17. Everyone good? Yep. Yeah. Am I sounding okay or am I sounding completely yeah. whacked? Okay, I feel completely whacked, guys. So I, my apologies if this doesn't come out right or if my reading is even worse than normal. Okay, Matthew 17. And after six days, Yahushua takes Kepha, Yaakov, and Yochanan, his brother, and brings them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as light, as the light. Okay? What, 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 what's happening here? So guys? basically, I went up to a mountain with only two of his disciples, and three. Three for Yaakov. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. 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 So, basically, transfigured means. What did your guys say? You transformed. Say? He was transformed before them. And his face shone like the sun. Kind of like Moshe, right? Yeah. yeah. What he's doing. Okay. Three. And behold, there appeared unto them Moshe and Eliyahu talking with him. Okay. So who who is this? We have Moses so, and Elijah. So it's crazy because they like come back, right? They come out of nowhere on a mountain. Right. And, well, I mean, and Elijah is who? John, John the Baptist. And so he just, and so we have Elijah. He came and he went in a and chariot. Back again. Then he came back as John the Baptist. Got his head lopped off, and then he's back now hanging out with Messiah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And Moshe. And you, you see that I think Keep is starting to get like a lot more belief here because you see in the next what the next verse he says, instead of like saying some random thing, he just says, Well Well, this is this is kind of interesting, right? This falls on a very interesting time, right? Because if this if this isn't like an ordained chapter by this time, because he's about to ask him something very important. Let's go on. Then answered Kepha and said unto Yahushua, Adonai, it is good for us to be here. If you will, let us make here three Sukkot, Kukot, one for you and one for Moshe and one for Eliyahu. All of a sudden, the, the dream team comes back, right? All of a sudden, the, the, the A team is here. We have Messiah, we have Moshe, and we have Eliyahu. And so it kind of tells you they might be celebrating the Feast of Sukkot during this time if he was going to make them booth there. Yeah, why, why wouldn't they? He's like, hey, he came back for the feast. They, they're back. And so these guys are probably excited. They're like, wow, we got some new guests. While he yet spoke, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, this is my Yaqid, 
in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Wow. Okay, what is Yaquid, folks? Uh, my chosen or beloved. Beloved son, right, is what they have. Yaquid. And uh, it says, properly united by implication, beloved, also lonely, the life as not to be replaced. Now, people that believe that Messiah Yahushua and Yahuwah, or God and Jesus, are the exact same people, this is very. This would be an odd situation right here, right? All of a sudden, you would be coming down, and you'd be talking to yourself when yourself was right there. You'd be, you'd be like making your voice come out of the clouds when you were sitting right there. That would be crazy. That would be, be a that miracle. Would, that would be. That would be a miracle of itself. But that's not the point. I mean, that's not what's happening here. Okay, and so the the it blows. The the Trinity is not a doctrine. It's a it's a doctrine of demons. There is no standing ground for. A, the Trinity anywhere in the Bible. There is. There's absolutely none. Six. And when the Talmudian heard it, they fell on their face and were so afraid. And my hope, one, yeah, <laughs> just chuckling. Can you imagine the situation, right? Here they are right here. All of a sudden, hey, let's get some soup. You guys ready to get some sukas? The cloud comes out, right? And it freaks them out and they're down on the ground. It's right? like Joshua when he sees the angel and he like starts bowing down before and him. He's like, get up. This is going to freak us all out, right? Everybody that, you know, when you have read these encounters in the Bible... Everybody falls to their knees. Everybody has to be lifted up by these entities, right? These entities are, come back up. Come back up, humans. You're, you Don't be scared. So this is, this is why I chuckle. Um, and Yahushua came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Yahushua only. And as they came down from the mountain, Yahushua charged them saying, Tell the vision to no man until the son of Adam be risen again from the dead. Did your guys say vision? KJV does, but NIV does not. Mine says vision. Okay, so uh, is it just a vision, or is it, what? What did they encounter? They, Was it real? They went up to something. They like they went into like either like some crazy thing, or like they all came down. I think it could be called. They would assume it as a vision, right? Do we know what mountain this was? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking Galilee, or maybe somewhere where he's at. Usually, I wonder where Mount Zion is. I wonder if it could have been Mount Zion. Were they up on the top of Mount Zion and had like Maybe. a, I don't know. That would be the uh, architect team that was looking to see where the kingdom was going to go. Okay, here we go. Ten. And his Talmudian asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Eliyahu must come first? And Yahushua answered and said unto them, Eliyahu truly shall come first and restore all things. Okay, what what is what are they saying here on ten, guys? Uh, so basically he is asking... What about Eliyahu? Because he's heard the they've heard the prophecies before Eliyahu come first. Then he's about to explain who Eliyahu was. Yeah, and, and who is Eliyahu? It's Jochanan, which will tell us. So what? What is it? What do they mean though when they're saying that? Why because, say the scribes? Why are the scribes saying that Eliyahu will come because first? Because prophesy that Eliyahu's going to come down. He's going to set the way that for for Yahusha. He's going to set the way for the Messiah. They missed it. And they're like, "Who is he? You're here." Where is Eliyahu? And they missed it. They missed John the Bat. They missed the guy that was in the wilderness speaking of, you know, eat, eating locusts and, and honey and, you know, speaking of these things. They missed it. Okay. Um, 11. And Yahushua answered and said unto them, Eliyahu truly shall come first and restore all things. And he did, right? I mean, that prophecy came true. But I say unto you that Eliyahu is come already and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they willed. Likewise shall also the son of Adam suffer of them. So, you know, this is amazing when you figure out that Elijah is John the Baptist and, you know, and as well, you know, it's like it is a reincarnation of a kind, a Yah's kind of reincarnation. It's not like, you know, they will say, you know, the, I think it's Chinese people there. Everybody's in a reincarnation. You'll come back as like a uh, caterpillar or something like that, or you come back as a moth and you know, that's how you live your life. But I mean, this is a, a way that Yah did bring back his people to do his will and they literally like messiah said they they killed him right they they literally it's i don't know if it's like a reincarnation thing because Eliyahu never died you know he didn't die but he is he can't he got to live again right he is his, as a baby uh, elijah was has a baby we know of him as a baby and he he was taken away and he wasn't was Enoch. right but then john the baptist was the baby too because he bounced in the in the womb of his mother when uh, messiah yahushua's mother was there right so um it's it's not reincarnation. That's all I'm not saying. I'm not saying it's reincarnation thing. I'm just saying that Yah has uh, revived him. Maybe that's not the right word. So anyway, let's go on. Thirteen. Then the Talmudian understood that he spoke unto them of Yachonin the baptizer, and when they were and so that 
that should have like rang some bells right there, right? If they if they understood that John the Baptist was Elijah, that that should have really sent some chills up their spine to understand that. All right, fourteen. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Adonai, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed, for oftentimes he falls into the fire and oft into the water. Why is it epilep epileptic? Okay. So lunatic, I know lunatic has something to do with a moon. And it's like they, they believe that it's, it's a, or that it is a, it is something. I mean, a lunatic is, is something. I don't know where the word originated from. But, um, yeah, it, so yours says epileptic? Epilep yeah. And he says he has seizures and, su and is suffering greatly. Right. Mine and says epilepsy, and then in parentheses it says is moonstruck. Is moonstruck, yeah. So um, people, I think they, that ought, they thought that would cause some of this, that the moon had something to do with this stuff. I, I don't think it does. Um, however, there's some weird stuff that happens under full moons. Like the, all the, you can ask all the police people out there, there's... Everything goes crazy during full moon, so whatever. I don't know. Here we go. Um, and 15, 16. And I brought him to your Talmudian, and they could not cure him. Then Yahushua answered and said, O faithless and perverse nation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Yahushua rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. So are we to think that any epileptic epilepsy epileptic epileptic well that's it's it's called epilepsy but it's uh, epileptic is if you have it is it all demon possessed i don't think so i don't i don't know i've never actually like had like encounter with one so no yeah, i don't know but i mean he was able to rebuke and that's that's amazing the power that yahushua just displayed I'm, to fix somebody that was seizing up this people seize a lot I mean, the, Demons could have been giving him seizures. They could have been afflicting him. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, I mean, if that... Well, that, that's something to very talk about, right? If a demon is able to cause a person to, to have a seizure, what do you think they can do to us, gentlemen? Jade? Whatever they want. Could they think they can control your heart, mind, and soul? Make cool. you? Could they make you, like, super angry? Probably. And violent? Probably. It's those kind of things? I mean, if it was able to give somebody a seizure... Right, Cade? Yeah. Right, so, I mean... How do we how do we know if we're being attacked by a demon? Do we have bodily issues? Is it is this what we could be expecting? I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying if that if a demon can cause somebody to seize up and have seizures, and literally like when Messiah Yahushua was talking about one demon bringing back the other seven, right, and just really wrecking havoc on the guy, um, what do we make of this? How do we protect ourselves from this, gentlemen? We read the Torah. We keep the faith. We do not let outside influences take over our body. What happens if we start feeling that we have unclean spirits in us? How do we how do we do this? We rebuke we, them. We pray. We pray. And how else? I mean, what what do we do? How does a, how does a person that's out there and I mean, I think depression is part of a demonology. I think it, a demon will sit there and wreak havoc on people until we're so depressed that we just we're not the same people and we will do the things that we would normally do. So how do we how, how are we able to fix this? Uh, is it just all prayer? For casting, casting them out. Yeah, and we know we know also not from this one, but here. But we know how do, how do we know of, of getting rid of them? Prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting, and, and fasting, and I think that is the biggest thing right there is fasting. So, all right. Then came the Talmudian to Yahushua apart and said, "Why could we not cast him out?" And Yahushua said unto them, "Because of your unbelief. For Amen, I say unto you." If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit, this kind goes not out, but by prayer and fasting. Okay. Have you done? I have anything for that. 21? Yeah. See footnotes below. What does that mean, footnotes below? Some manuscripts include her, her, her words similar to Mark 9.29. Okay, so 9.29 must say that. Um... So does your what does your guys say for twenty one? But this kind does not go out except through prayer and fasting. Okay, so this kind. So now we know that there are various kinds stronger than the others. Um, so yeah, I mean the only way that we would know how to get rid of a a demon is by fasting. Now with that, if, if somebody in your house you suspected of having demons, would it be them that fasted, or would it be everyone in the house that fasted Probably and prayed? Both. Probably everybody, right? Everybody that wants to afflict it. Huh. I wonder how you know 
when the, when the unclean spirit is gone. I don't know. Okay, 22. And while they abode in Galilee, Yahushua said unto them, The son of Adam shall be betrayed into the hands of, of men, and they shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised again. And they were exceedingly exceeding sorry. And when they were coming to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Kepha and said, Does not your Adonai pay tribute? Tax. Ta okay, temple tax. Okay, so in the NIV says temple tax. Okay, so... Um, like tithes? Yeah, I don't know. It seems like they... Uh, I don't know. I guess it seems like they... Uh, like the Mormons do. If you join the Mormon church, they come after you for that 10%. They will actually come to your door and they're like, Ah, you owe uh, this much. So, uh, yeah. And that's all unbiblical as well, paying that kind of 501c3 tithing. 25. He said, yes. And when he was come into the house, Yahushua prevented him, saying, What do you think, Shimon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom of, or tribute? Of their own children or of strangers? Okay, so does your guys have a better version? What does your say? So the, uh, the question is, first of all, they came and they were, they were hustling him for, for some tax money, mm. right? And then it, Messiah Yahushua's question to them is this. What is that? Dude, from see. whom do you, the sovereigns of the earth, take toll or tax? From their own sons or from strangers? Okay, NIV so says... So basically it's like, do they take it from like other people or take it from their children? When Peter came into the house, Yahushua was the first to speak. What do you think, Simon? He asked, from whom do the kings of the earth collect duty and taxes? From their own children or from others? So it'd be from others, right? I mean, that's, that's yeah. who they, they wouldn't do, right? Okay. 26. Kepha said unto him, of strangers, Yahushua said unto him, then are the children free? Then are the children free? Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go to the sea and cast a hook and take up a fish that first comes up. And when you have opened his mouth, you shall find a piece of money. Take that, that take, and give unto them for me and you. Okay. So... What did he just imply here? So they were trying to get money. Messiah Yahushua said they were essentially the kings of the earth. They said, and their, yeah. their children were taxing them. And you didn't want to. Uh, I don't understand exactly. Do you guys catch up what he said? Yeah, he said, like, the kings, they're not going to tax their own kids for money. Right. They're not going to exhort them for money, but they'd rather do this strange on the outside of the kingdom. He's like, we, but we are the sons. We don't have to pay taxes. But unless they stumble in us, unless they, unless we offend them or upset them, make them stumble by our teachings, go get some money for us and go go fishing real quick and you'll find some coins. Nice. Okay, yeah, I think that makes sense. Does anyone else have any other take on this? No. no. Okay. All right. Well, I guess that is it. Um, thank you guys very, very much for hanging out as we are doing our thing. And I hope this, uh, sorry for our noisy roof and bangs and pops and hisses and whizzes and everything, all the distractions, but... We appreciate you guys hanging out, and we hope you guys have a wonderful day. And um, it's a shimmy atzeret. Shimini atzeret. Atzeret. Try it again. Shimini atzeret. Is that right? Everyone I have it? No I believe so. I don't, I don't think he was, so maybe. All right. All right, guys. Thank you guys very much. Have a wonderful day. So long. So long.